Hello friends, this video on respiration in plants part 6 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So what happens next in step 4? So in step 4, the starting material is going to be the product which was formed in step 3. So that is fructose 1,6 bisphosphate, right? So now the enzyme which will act here is aldolase and the product which will be formed is it is not is, there are two products which will be formed, dihydroxyacetone phosphate and glyceraldehyde phosphate. So there are two products which will be formed in this step. Right? So let us see what exactly happens here. So the starting material was fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. So there are six carbon and two phosphate groups. Correct? So this is fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. Now this gets changed into two products and one interesting fact is that these two are isomers of each other. So the first product and the second product, both of them have got the same molecular formula. It is just that their arrangements or their structures are different. So how is the structure? So if you talk and both each of them are a three carbon compound. So this was a six carbon compound. So basically it gets split into two three carbon compounds. So let us see how the two three carbon compounds are. So the first carbon compound would be somewhat like this with one phosphate group. The second three carbon compound will again be somewhat like this with one phosphate group. So basically it gets split like this. So now you have two three carbon compounds with one phosphate group H. So you see here both of them have one phosphate group. Right? And these two are isomers of each other. Both of them have the same molecular formula that is C3H5O3P1. So this is the molecular formula for both of them but the arrangements in both are different. So then this is what happens and it happens in presence of this enzyme called aldolase. So now you see finally in step 4, the 4 carbon compound, the, the 6 carbon compound got split into 2, 3 carbon compound. So let's see what happens next. So in step 5, the starting material is going to be dihydroxyacetone phosphate which was formed in step 4. Now in step 4 two products were formed. One was this one and the other one was glyceraldehyde phosphate. Now in step 5 what is done is basically this dihydroxyacetone phosphate is also converted into glyceraldehyde phosphate. Right? That means in step 4, two products were formed, 1 and 2. In step 5, 1 is also converted into 2. So that is what we are doing actually. So 2 will remain unchanged. 2 has nothing to do in step 5. So here an enzyme will be there called triose phosphate isomerase. So whenever you have this term isomerase, that means it will convert a compound into its isomer. Right? So now as I told, both 1 and 2 were isomers of each other. So now we want to convert 1 into 2. So that means we want to convert 1 into its isomer. So we use an enzyme isomerase. So triose phosphate isomerase is the enzyme which will be used here. And what will be the product? Product will be glyceraldehyde phosphate. Correct? So this is, this is how it will be formed. So now, the dihydroxyacetone phosphate, the dihydroxyacetone phosphate, which will look somewhat like this. This gets converted into its isomer, which is again a 3 carbon atom with one phosphate group, just that the arrangements are different. So now, in step 4, we already had one glyceraldehyde phosphate which we have kept undisturbed. We did not do anything to that. Now here again, dihydroxyacetone is also converted into glyceraldehyde phosphate. So what is the net result of step 4 and 5? So the net result of step 4 and 5 is that we get two molecules of glyceraldehyde phosphate. Right? 
So please understand this clearly. In step 4, you got one glyceraldehyde phosphate and one dihydroxyacetone phosphate. Both were isomers. Now what we did, we converted dihydroxyacetone phosphate also into glyceraldehyde phosphate. So now we have two glyceraldehyde phosphate. Clear? Okay, so we completed, we are halfway through glycolysis. Out of the total 10 steps, we have reached step 5. So at step 5, we have two molecules of 3 carbon compound glyceraldehyde phosphate. So now let us look at step 6. So here the starting material is of course glyceraldehyde phosphate and step 6 is quite important and interesting as well. Now here we use an enzyme called triose phosphate dehydrogenase. Now we will see the speciality of dehydrogenase enzymes. Now here this step in itself has got two sub steps. So two things will be happening here. Let us see what is that. So here the product is 1,3 biphosphoglycerate. Okay. Let's see how is that formed. Okay. Now here in step 6, we will be utilizing an oxidizing agent because oxidation will take place in this step. And what is that oxidizing agent? That is NAD+, that is nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. So this is my oxidizing agent which will be utilized here. Now in the first step inside this, what will happen? This enzyme that is triose phosphate dehydrogenase, it will transfer the hydrogen ion to NAD plus and it will form NADH. So this NAD plus will be converted into NADH plus H plus and this will be done by the enzyme and which is the enzyme I am not writing the entire name of the enzyme because the name is quite big. It is triose phosphate dehydrogenase. So that is how it will oxidize this NAD plus. Now in the next step what will happen? This same enzyme will add an inorganic phosphate from the cytosol to this oxidized glyceraldehyde phosphate. So the same enzyme will add one phosphate group. So glyceraldehyde phosphate. Let us. So glyceraldehyde phosphate is a three carbon compound with one phosphate group. So one inorganic phosphate will be added. So from where this inorganic phosphate will come? There will be so many phosphates present, the phosphate group present in the cytosol. So from there, one inorganic phosphate will be added to this compound to form the product and what is the product so product is 1 3 biphosphoglycerate so that is again a 3 carbon compound but here you have two phosphate group that is why the name biphospho so one phosphorus was already there one more phosphorus will get added that is why 1 3 biphosphate biphosphoglycerate will be formed Right now, this process will get repeated two times. Why two times? Because in step five, two molecules of glyceraldehyde phosphate were produced. Right now, for each molecule of glyceraldehyde phosphate, one molecule of 1,3 biphosphoglycerate will be formed. Correct. So, since you had two molecules, therefore, two molecules of 1,3 biphosphoglycerate will be formed. So let us, and also another important thing here is two molecules of NADH are also formed. So here if you see this is also formed. Now these two steps will get repeated for each molecule of glyceraldehyde, right? So for first molecule one NADH is formed. Again for the next molecule one more NADH will be formed. So two molecules of NADH are also formed. Now that needs to be counted. That's because NADH are the energy rich energy rich molecules. They are capable of producing one molecule of NADH is capable of producing three molecules of ATP. So you can just imagine how energy rich are they. So here you in this step we are producing two molecules of NADH and two molecules of 1,3 biphosphor these rate. So now as we go Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.